Kyle Klingman with Track Wrestling with Dan Gable, 1972 Olympic Champion, 15 NCAA Championships at Iowa. When I say that number, does that ever sound like a, a big amount to you? 15 championships in 21 seasons? I guess it does, but at the time it probably didn't just because you were more into that drive to be number one all the time. My drive now is to get the sport to be number one, you know, or at least to be everywhere it should be. And that's where I'm at today, you know, and that's why I'm here. So um, I think you're into what you're into at the time, and I'm a promoter now, so I love the sport. We're at Beast of the East in Delaware, a state that doesn't have a Division One program. They'd like to have that, but is it strange to you that we have such a major tournament in a state that doesn't have a college wrestling program? Yeah, it is kind of strange. And what's interesting, interesting to me is that I really hadn't come out here in Delaware much, but in reality I have been because it's right in the mix of all the good wrestling countries, all the states, and I didn't realize, you know, they were right there, and that makes it more understandable for me to say, well, they got to have a college program, University of Delaware. So. I, I really um, am surprised that, you know, we're 30 minutes from Pennsylvania and we're kind of the same with New Jersey and New York, uh, all these great wrestling states and that we don't, and we have a tremendous tournament here, Beast of the East, and it's a full house and that we don't provide the opportunity for these kids that have high school programs, these coaches, and these kids that are wrestling in the state, they should definitely be able to uh, stay home. Uh, I stay home. From your understanding, what does it take to get a college wrestling program into the school? What does that take to actually get that done? Well, you know, <sighs> it's always nice to have a little power, to have a little authority. And, you know, if you have people in, in certain locations or positions, that's great. But they also, you know, everybody always fights because we need money. And we really need more opportunity, but it, it's going to only come about with people stepping up and providing that opportunity by not taking away something else. We've already been down that route before. So I think the big thing is uh, people can show that it's a need and there's a lot of people that will back it and some big corporations or some people with, with money will, that have wrestled will uh, want to help out and just make our sport that much more well known because we're on the rise right now and we're, we're, we have females and it's going gangbusters that way and I'll tell you what it's gonna work and uh, it's, it's even though we're maybe not at the high time of our career we probably hit the low bottoms but we're on the way back up and I love it 2020 Olympics are coming up we shrink down to six weight classes you never really had to do with that as a coach but if you did how would you manage going down to six weight classes if you were getting guys to perform at that high of a level I do a lot of uh, homework and uh, it's almost like coaching because I look and see who should be at the right weights but but a lot of times they don't understand what weight's right for them until they get there, until they've been there. And if they haven't been there and haven't done it, then you know it might be confusing to them. So I think they need a lot of advice and coaching. And you kind of look at your own traits, where you're good at and what you're not so good at, and then you can make a better decision. So if nutrition's tough for you, then you probably not want to. Probably don't want to go the route where you lose a lot of weight. But if it's if it's easy and you survive it well, uh, it, because anybody can make any weight. But the real issue is, can you win it that way? And so you got to feel the same. You can't be weaker at a lighter weight than you were at a heavier weight. So it's uh, it's a process but there's a lot of good coaches out there right now and it's, it's sad but I'm more 
concern about the process being expanded into 10 weights, into 8 weights, into uh, what it should be. Uh, one step at a time, but I don't like, I don't have a lot of patience to wait too long. 2013 might have been the bottom of our sport when we nearly lost wrestling at the Olympics. Where are we? You talked about that ebb and flow and we're on the way back up. Are we as strong as we've ever been? Where are we in that process? As ever been, uh, you know, we're better off than we've ever been. And the reason why is because we've got more people working on the sport full time year round, more organizations. And because of that, the coaches don't have to do all the work, or the athletes don't have to do all the work. By that I mean the administrative part of the work. And so even internationally, we have a better group. It went from FILA to UWW. Uh, a lot of the same people are there, some of the same attitude maybe, and they're maybe hiding it. But we have to have new people that come in and expose that. And we don't need to kick people out, but we certainly need to get them to have a little bit better thoughts of how this sport goes. So really the thoughts are, how do we go to more weight classes ASAP? Uh, it's kind of sad, uh, this Olympics, but I mean, it, it, it's the way it is, and we got to go from there. Dan Gable, thanks for the time.